Let's take a quick look at the structure of the atmosphere. This is a diagram from NOAA, or N-O-A-A, -A, showing the vertical structure of the atmosphere. Notice, first of all, the atmosphere is not very thick. Up here at the top of the diagram, we've got the space shuttle, which of course no longer orbits Earth, but uh, it's telling us that this is outer space, basically 100 miles out. Uh, and so these uh, satellites and um, the space station and um, shuttles would um, transit the, um, the, the Earth in outer space, um, still officially part of the thermosphere. But what this is telling us is that there's really not much atmosphere out here at all. Uh, and so the difference between the thermosphere and the exosphere is one of having um, effectively no uh, atmosphere at all, enough that it's, it's outer space for all intents and purposes. You need a spacesuit to be out there. Um, the exosphere is even farther out, so even fewer uh, uh, atoms and molecules of gases out there. So 100 miles from the surface to outer space uh, is not very thick. Uh, when, we, when we look at a diagram of the Earth and it shows the atmosphere, keep that in mind that it's exaggerating that scale. It's making it seem like there's more atmosphere than there really is. It, 100 miles of atmosphere, that's if you put it on its side, that would be from like Seattle to before the Canadian border, right? It's not that far on, on the scale of something as massive as the Earth is. Furthermore, if we look at the amount of air there is in the atmosphere, most of it is concentrated way down close to the surface. So that's another reason to think about the atmosphere as a very, very thin thing. Closest to the Earth, we have the troposphere, separated from the stratosphere by the tropopause. The stratosphere goes up to around 30 miles. The troposphere, um, the tropopause varies uh, with latitude, uh, but is somewhere around uh, 10 to 12 miles above the surface. Uh, and then above the stratosphere uh, is the mesosphere, separated from the stratosphere by the stratopause. The mesopause is above that, and then the thermosphere outside of that. Let's take a look at uh, a diagram that helps us understand why these layers exist and how they're differentiated from one another. Let me find my diagram. Here we go. So this is a diagram showing us the temperature profile of each of these layers of the atmosphere. What we observe, and so notice now that we've got sort of the diagram with a picture of clouds and the like here, and this is a classic uh, anvil-type storm cloud. So the, the cloud has such vertical development that it actually hits the top of the troposphere, bumps up against the tropopause, and then forms an anvil-shaped uh, cloud head on it. Notice that all the mountains of the world are um, underneath the top of the troposphere, right? Mount Everest sort of scrapes the top of the troposphere, but even it is within the troposphere. What I want to draw your attention to here is that we've got the same vertical scale, but now we've stretched out a horizontal scale. The x-axis now, instead of just being a picture of the atmosphere like we had in the last one, now we've got this temperature scale. And what we see here is that the temperature of the troposphere at sea level is just a bit below 20 degrees Celsius on average. And then as we go up in the troposphere, the temperature becomes much colder until at the tropopause, the temperature is nearly 60 below Celsius. So even colder than that in Fahrenheit. Uh, or even colder than that numerically in Fahrenheit, I should say, right? So very, very cold temperatures at the top of the troposphere. Uh, we, we experience this in everyday life when we drive up into the mountains or climb up into the mountains. We notice that the mountains are covered in snow and ice. Uh, and the tallest mountains, even in the summer, even in equatorial regions, are covered in snow and ice at high elevations. That is because the atmosphere in the troposphere becomes colder with altitude. As you move higher in elevation on a landmass, the corresponding temperature of the atmosphere is lower. Uh, and that tells us a couple things right away. The first thing it tells us is that the troposphere is heated from the bottom. And so the warm land being heated by the sun's rays hitting it is what warms the atmosphere uh, through uh, a variety of, of heat transfer processes. And so as we go higher in the troposphere, it becomes colder and colder and colder until up really high, it's actually quite cold. 
The tropopause refers to the pause in the cooling of the atmosphere. The troposphere gets colder and colder the higher we go until the tropopause, at which case it stops getting colder and it starts getting warmer eventually. So this tropopause is where it stops getting colder and just stays quite cold. But then notice the stratosphere. As we move higher in the stratosphere, then uh, it gets warmer and warmer and warmer. And so we get warmed back up to freezing, about zero degrees Celsius. I also want to point out again that at this high in the stratosphere, we're talking about very, very, very low air pressures. There's not nearly enough air to breathe if you were up this high and you didn't have effectively a space suit, an oxygen tank, and, and protective gear, um, you would die uh, right away because you, from asphyxiation, you wouldn't have enough um, air to breathe. And so um, this is, we talk about this like the atmosphere and we think about it like it's down here at sea level, but really we run out of air quite quickly as we, as we go up in the atmosphere. So the stratosphere is different than the troposphere because it goes increasing in temperature with increasing elevation right, or increasing altitude, I should say. And then we have another pause. So what was a warming pattern suddenly pauses and then becomes a cooling pattern again through the mesosphere. Now the stratosphere, we can tell, is heated from the top, not from the bottom. And in particular, this is from the absorption of some frequencies of ultraviolet radiation. The stratosphere has a protective function where it protects the Earth effectively from uh, from uh, too much UV, or it would be too much for us anyway, we'd, it would be unhealthy. The mesosphere then cools off to even colder temperatures than we observe in the tropopause. And then the thermosphere is so named because the few little molecules and atoms of atmosphere that are out here get increasingly excited. They have increasingly high energy, but there's very, very few of them. So their temperature becomes quite warm, even though, as I already mentioned, this is basically outer space. And so uh, you, you wouldn't, if you got outside your spaceship into this, this limited amount of atmosphere, you wouldn't feel warm because you wouldn't be interacting with that much air. I hope that explains the structure of the atmosphere and have a great day.